He walked southwards along Westland Row, but the rest of it is in the other trousers. Oh, and I forgot that latchkey too. Bore this funeral affair. Oh well, poor fellow, it's not his fault. When was it I got it made up last? Wait, I changed a sovereign, I remember. First of the month it was, must have been, or the second. Oh, he can look it up in his prescription book. It's been here since uh, 1847 when Mark Sweeney, uh, a doctor, bought the building and uh, he ran it as his consulting rooms for about three years. He had a son uh, who was a chemist, so he passed it on to him and it uh, stayed functioning as a chemist until 2009. Chemists, uh, they didn't change anything and of course the outside is exactly as it would have been. The inside, apart from the books and uh, the other cards and that we sell to help pay the rent has stayed the same. We have old prescriptions as well in some of the drawers which were never collected. Uh, this is Willow Bark, which of course preceded Aspro. And uh, these were never collected, they were uh, left in the drawers here. The same as uh, coal tar pine, which would have been a remedy, remedy for the skin. And of course we have valerian in one of these packages as well, which of course you use to calm yourself down. And these have been here pre-1903 and still wrapped in their brown packages and their string, so uh, nothing has changed with her, them either. So uh, we're still waiting for people to come back and collect them. If you open Ulysses in chapter five, um, you'll find that Leopold Bloom has been sent by his wife, Molly, who's a wonderful soprano, to buy her face cream. He's never been in here before. So he's been first in the pub across the road, which was called Conway's at the time, now called Kennedy's, which is where we have our breakfast, uh, the bre Calypso breakfast is what we call it, which is chapter four in Ulysses. He goes down the road to Old Hallows Church, to his friend Dignam's funeral, then comes back up here for looking for the uh, face cream. Of course, being a typical husband and man, forgets the prescription. So the chemist uh, has to look it up in his prescription book and when uh, the chemist is doing that he describes uh, Leopold the interior of the chemist which of course hasn't changed. He waited by the counter inhaling the keel reek of drugs, the dusty dry smell of sponges and loafers. What of time taken up telling your aches and pains. The difficulties is, uh, as usual, we don't get funding from anyone uh, so we have a rent to pay which we pay every week and uh, it was 3.55, now it's 6.73, so we have to find the difference. And uh, of course, uh, we, at this time of the year, which is uh, January, February, March, it's kind of quiet tourist-wise, so we depend on the harvest, which is the 16th of June, Bloomsday, when people come in and buy vast quantities of lemon soap. Yes, sir, the chemist said. That was two and nine. Have you brought a bottle? No, Mr. Bloom said. Make it up, please. I'll call later in the day and I'll take one of those soaps. How much are they? Fourpence, sir. Mr. Bloom raised a cake to his nostrils. Sweet, lemony wax. I'll take this one, he said. That makes three and a penny. Yes, sir, the chemist said. You can pay all together, sir, when you come back. <laughs> 